Good morning, folks. Hopefully you caught our special pull shift video last night. Today we've got an easy schedule for the morning show. Far fewer papers are released at the end of the year, so we are sticking to the sun and the weather. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where there were no big solar flares or CMEs sent in Earth's direction. Big coronal hole continues turning through. There still may be eruptive activity to watch for in the coming days, but as for the last 24 hours, there was really only one event, a filament eruption. To begin with that story, you may have caught this video from a few days ago. Let's go ahead and re-watch this quick little clip now to lead into that story. Hey folks, going to make a little prediction here. We've sure got a lot of plasma filaments right now, don't we? They have been pretty stable, which means the magnetic fields in the corona, which were stable enough to produce the filaments in the first place, have remained stable themselves. But there's one area where I see destabilization potential of those magnetic fields, and yes, this is where sunspots can impact other solar phenomena. This incoming filament on the south, it is bigger than it looked initially, stretching back a good ways. If there is one filament that has a better chance of erupting over the next day or two, it's this one. Why? Because the sunspot group just to the north of it, that bright region, is having the most significant morphing and evolution of all the sunspots on the disk right now. You can see here that evolution and changing face of the sunspots, and remember, this alters the magnetic fields of the corona all around it, and if that continues, and especially if it releases a solar flare, it has a good chance of modifying the local magnetic fields that are keeping that plasma filament stable. Now, given its orientation, and whether it's the front, rear, or entire filament system that releases, it may have a good chance of affecting Earth's magnetic field with the CME in the coming days if it does erupt. Could this situation change? Of course it could. Sunspots can stop morphing, they can decay, they can stabilize, or other sunspots may begin to morph significantly. For example, some of the larger filaments on the north, which are beginning to depart the Earth-facing heliographic longitudes, have some bright areas ahead into the south. Those are sunspot groups, too. Now, those sunspots are not as active in their shifting right now, but as many of you know, that can change in a matter of hours. For now, however, it is the incoming southern sunspot group making the biggest development, which puts the stability of the nearby filament most at risk. By the way, when a sunspot or filament event causes other activity at a nearby sunspot or filament, we call that a sympathetic eruption, like a domino magnetic cascade nearby. We'll see you over the coming days how this unfolds, and I will see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone. Well, after the northern filament teased an eruption, which we mentioned in that video, it was indeed the forecasted fate of the filament that unfolded. Luckily, it was the leading edge that released first, which pulled it up and back from Earth's perspective. Correct forecast, and luckily it erupted in a way that will not impact the Earth. Still have other active regions and filaments we'll be watching over the weekend and into next week, but we are also watching the solar wind to be amplified by this coronal hole. It's much bigger than it looked initially, stretching from the north polar crown down trans-equatorially into the southern solar hemisphere. The coronal hole stream is expected to arrive here either late on the 31st or early on the 1st of the year. Minor geomagnetic storms are expected. Folks, please find a way to catch last night's special video if you didn't see it. It was the top five pole shift stories of the year. I'm betting at least one you forgot about. Find it on our channel homepage. But now let's take a moment to hit the wild waves in California. The video footage of these has been amazing and a bit scary in some cases, including one guy who is apparently in pretty good shape sprinting away from the inundation. It was all caused by an offshore storm driving massive wave surges towards the coastline. The waves are finally dropping in height a bit here today, but moderate and potentially dangerous waves may still linger. Luckily, the lessening risk should continue as a high-pressure cell moves into the region, which should serve to calm down everything a bit in the days ahead. Folks, today and tomorrow are the last days to get the hugely discounted rates on our PDFs. I realize many of you want hard copies of our books, but honestly, it's cheaper to get the PDF and print it yourself than to get the hard copy and pay for shipping. Plus, all the PDFs can be word searched so you can quickly find what you're looking for. It's also easier to share the PDFs with your friends. Link is below to that, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.